All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Cherry Kubota. I'm a professor at The Ohio State University. I'm just hosting this webinar series as a part of the Optimia research group uh, led by Michigan State University, Ohio State University, The Ohio State University, Purdue University, and uh, the University of Arizona. So uh, welcome to CAFE monthly webinar to talk about indoor science um, and technologies. All right, so let's go over as usual. Um, let me, okay. Uh, so I'd like to uh, introduce the upcoming schedule. Um, so today is the May um, cafe, and then uh, I'm gonna introduce the, today's presenter in a, a minute. And then June, only two weeks away, right? Um, so it's gonna be soon. Uh, June, we have a, a speaker from Oishi Farms talking about indoor strawberry production. Hmm. I have to give you a heads up. This is not going to be recorded. So you have to be there to listen. So um, all season Oishi Berry. So that's what um, uh, CEO uh, Hiroki Koga is going to talk about uh, June 1st. Uh, announcement will come out soon. So just wanted to give uh, um, information. And then as sort of our tradition, June, there's no cafe. So that I, I, I can relax, you know, you know enjoy the summer. <laughs> just kidding. All right, so, but um, August and beyond, you, you will get the information soon. Um, a little bit of conference information. Starting in June, I believe, um, ISHS series of webinars uh will be available i think it's it's not just members but also non-members is that correct eric you know i'm not sure it, <laughs> things are cloudy regarding that for me okay i if i if i'm wrong i will correct that next time but um my understanding is available but it's a series of talks um eric and is one of them and then i'm also um, talking about vertical farm. So it, it's interesting. And then we have Cultivate and then we have stakeholder meeting, um, which is an opportunity for you to learn the update of our research status of this um, project group. So um, uh, you already have that um, first announcement and then we will keep updated, um, keep you updated with um, more information about that program. Right, with that, I'd like to um, quickly introduce, um, so today's speaker is Dr. Krishna Nemari. He's assistant professor at uh, uh, Department of Horticulture, Landscape, Architecture, Landscape. Um, did I take, did I do the wrong name? But uh, in Purdue University, he specialized in controlled environment, agriculture, uh, extension research. So um, it's, it's a sort of you know mix of technology and science. So um, so with that quick introduction, I'd like to have uh, Dr. Nemari take over. I stop sharing, and then um, um, have his presentation. Oh, you are mute. You are muted. Okay, I just unmuted mm -hmm. to confirm my voice. Okay, I'm gonna go and share my screen now. Uh, actually, the presentation. Let's see. Okay, and you should be seeing the presentation. Can you please confirm? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Sherry. I appreciate uh, me giving me this opportunity to talk to growers. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Krishna Nimali, and uh, the talk uh, is on smart sensors for indoor farming. So the way I want to do today is um, I'll start giving a little background about myself, for probably for a couple of minutes, what I do in terms of you know, teaching, and then we'll dive into this uh, uh, interesting topic. Um, I have a lot of pictures. Uh, there is very little statistical analysis, that type of data. Most of the slides are built with pictures and very simple information. So it should be very easy to grasp the content. 
Uh, towards the end, I will also show you a little demonstration. Um, I feel uh, uh, I, I've learned from others that uh, you know, usually the demonstrations go very well, very interesting to our audience. So I have a demonstration planned that uh, kind of describes how easy to use these smart sensors and get some really economically valuable measurements in indoor farming. Um, that said, so the topics will be my background. Why should we monitor plants in indoor farming or vertical farming? So what are smart sensors? What can you measure using these smart sensors? And there'll be a demonstration. And finally, I will share a little bit about how we develop this technology and how or what are our plans making this available to growers. And that's going to be most interesting and important, right? So we'll also share some, some ideas that we are right now thinking about how to make this technology easily available to growers. Um, at Purdue University, I started about four and a half years back in 2016, July. Prior to that, I was uh, a senior scientist at Monsanto company. Um, my specialty was controlled environment plant physiology. Um, before that, I was a postdoc at UC Davis, and prior to that, I obtained my master's and PhD degrees from University of Georgia in Athens in uh, greenhouse physiology. But at Purdue University, since last four and a half years, I have been working on three research areas. Uh, the one at the top is greenhouse hydroponics. We develop region-specific best production practices. Uh, in this area, especially we focus on winter production. We looked at uh, how do we optimize heating costs? How can we develop technologies that are more efficient? We developed some good lighting strategies, supplemental lighting strategies for growing in winter. Uh, we also do a lot of research on nutrient management. And I'll share some of the results today later. Uh, we also work in the area of indoor ag indoor farming. And the focus of my research in indoor farming is related to increasing crop value. By crop value, I'm referring to dollars per pound of produce. So how can you increase that number? How can you get more dollars per pound of lettuce, per pound of produce that you sell that's grown in indoor farms? And we are focused on increasing vitamin levels for example, vitamin A and vitamin K, and also food safety. I mean, there's been a lot of uh, concerns about E. coli, salmonella contamination. So how can we improve or produce E. coli or salmonella free lettuce that is enriched with vitamins? So when such produce is de developed, it may fetch more dollars per pound. That's the goal, that's the idea there. And also the third area, which is probably what I'm going to talk a lot about today, is related to developing some smart sensing technologies. I mean, you can see the, is a small IoT, Internet of Things remote sensor. That's about $150. But this sensor can do so many things. And I'm going to show you some of the examples and also show um, how it does that stuff. Okay, so that, that is another area I work. So three primary areas of research, greenhouse hydroponics, indoor farming, and smart sensor development. I also have uh, a huge extension component and also a minor teaching component in my program. Uh, what we do is we develop this applied technologies based of research, and then we uh, take these technologies and we train our growers, uh, greenhouse growers, indoor farmers with these technologies. You can see here is a picture of uh, one of our workshops where uh, growers from Indiana and neighboring states come there, come to Purdue for a whole day. They spend a whole day learning about new technologies and also visit our greenhouses, look at our research plants. Here is one of my growing with growers show, showcasing what he's doing, answering their questions. We also conduct like this uh, indoor ag cafe. We also conduct webinars. Um, and these webinars are free. And we normally do these webinars during summer. And these webinars are on a monthly basis. And we pick up a specific topic 
and uh, try and outgrow it uh, with, uh, with topics related to greenhouse, hydroponics, indoor farming, and other interesting areas. Um, I also do teach a course called Controlled Environment Production of Horticulture Crops, and you can see uh, students from that course who actually did a project where they built a small indoor farm um, in this particular in this particular class, um, they were given three months of time. We provide them all the materials they need, and they they learn how to grow crops in indoor farms. So they play with lighting, reservoirs, plumbing. You know how to recycle nutrient solution. All of that they learn by actual hands-on experience. And our course has become more popular recently. We're getting more and more students resistant for this course simply because it provides a lot of hands-on experience to them. That's about me at Purdue University. This is what I do at Purdue University. And so from here, I want to now move into the, the, the topic for today. So I wanted to set the stage by describing some of the characteristics that you're all familiar with, um, right? Um, uh, related to indoor farming. And these two pictures, you probably know, I, I just picked these companies because, and uh, not just because they, uh, they're the best companies, it's just because they, they, they provide some of the information I'm sharing on this slide. What I wanted to mention, there are certain characteristics that are very specific to indoor farming. Um, the planting densities are very high and you can see the number of plants per unit area is so high. That makes it really challenging to monitor these plants. Um, as you probably know, we use a lot of inputs in terms of lighting, temperature costs, nutrient seed costs, and if you're growing microgreens, you're probably aware of the cost of the seed. So seed costs, all those input costs are very high. Per unit area, the amount of dollars spent on inputs is very high. Capital investment, the initial capital investment is also very high. So kind of a little bit risky here. And last but not the least, and this is probably what most of the growers are experiencing, a very few trained workforce. And, and some people start they learn a few things and they move on. So it's a, there's a lot of mobility in workforce and also there's a limited amount of trained workforce. So what this does is it really makes plant monitoring. You know, if you want to know how plants are growing, are there any issues with these plants? Do they need more fertilizer? Um, does the environmental conditions, are they optimal? All these things affect plant growth. And when you have such, uh, specific characteristics, the plant monitoring can become quite challenging. Not only that, um, what happens is if just you take your eye out of this, you know, if you, if you, if you don't pay attention, uh, if you, if you uh, are not paying attention to plant monitoring, just within a few days, and, and this is something probably as a grower, many of you have seen, you start seeing huge issues, production related issues, you know, germination, this is very important, right? You need to know how many seedlings are available, good quality seedlings are available. This is directly determines how much you can plant. And a little bit of uh, you know, uh, improper practices, then let's say germination can, uh, the numbers can go significantly low. Nutrient deficiencies, here is a picture. Um, is actually from one of our growers in Indianapolis. Uh, there's a small issue and automatically and, and al al almost within a few days, he started seeing nitrogen deficiencies in plants. And also sometimes if you're not paying attention to growth, uh, environmental conditions, plant growth can slow down and you can see how small the plants can become. What it means is you're going to, they're going to take a much longer time to finish. That's a lot of money. So it's so important to monitor, but it's not easy to monitor. It's challenging because of those characteristics I described. But if you don't monitor, you may end up in a situation like this. So that's, that's the challenge that uh, our growers face and so we've been thinking about this. How can we aid our growers, help our growers? You have to, you have to, you have to make 1,500 decisions on a daily basis. How can we help you come up with some of those technologies that are easy, affordable, can help you make some um, decisions uh, that will help improving your crop productivity and crop quality? And that's the goal of the Smart Sensing Project. We'll learn more about those, but I just want to set the stage about what this is. Um, so what we did initially, we started looking at what techniques are available with us for monitoring plants. And you can see here is a sort of like a, a range of techniques 
from low tech to really high tech, you can use visual methods. You just walk and you see something discolored, you probably know some, some issue with that. But then it could be some errors. If you're not trained very well to know whether it is a, a magnesium deficiency or it's a sulfur deficiency or it's a nitrogen deficiency, you can make mistakes. But you can send samples to laboratory and make some assessments. You can send samples to some university you know, extension specialists like me, but it takes time and time consuming and time is important. You can't wait two, three days is enough to cause big issues in indoor farming, given that many number of plants and high intense farming uh, practices. There are some handheld sensors like uh, chlorophyll meters or some light sensors, but they're all expensive. You know, how, how many of them you need to buy. For example, a chlorophyll meter may tell you about uh, nutrient status, nitrogen status of a plant, but the cost of that is $2,500. So most of our small scale indoor growers, that's like, uh, you know, perhaps maybe I'm going to postpone that purchase for next two or three years. So it's not something they can afford. And then there is this novel remote sensing technologies that are out there in conventional agriculture. You know, you probably have seen um, drones flying on fields, farmers capturing images. Um, but then that these are very complicated and expensive technologies. So bottom line, there are so many ways you can monitor plants, but unfortunately, uh, none of them are really suitable, um, really fit our industry. So that's where we started thinking about smart sensors. sensors. Well, smart sensors are based on, first of all, plant images. So I want you to remember that. You can take a picture of a plant and from that picture, you can extract a lot of useful information. And I'm gonna show a lot of examples later on, but I want you to remember that these smart sensors are based on plant pictures. They are low cost. They probably don't cost anything if they are built on smartphones. They may cost probably $150 if you are interested in some remote sensors like the one that I'm showing you in this picture. They're also very rapid. Instantaneously, you can get measurements. Like if you send samples to a lab, it may take three, four days. But instantaneously, you can get some of very useful information about plants. It's a very precise technology. It's very easy to use. It's just a click of a button, take a picture like you take a picture on your phones and you get useful information. This can be used actually to train untrained workforce. Everybody has a phone nowadays and this technology can be used on phones. Untrained growers can walk in, take pictures and from that they can also learn what that means in terms of plant characteristics and plant growth and, and some of the issues that are, that are present in, in cultivation. So this, this in general smart sensing means it's low cost, rapid, precise technology it's very easy to use and built up some of these off the shelf commercial products, okay? And we collect images and we generate useful information. So what can be measured using smart sensors? Many plant characteristics useful to plant growth can be measured using smart sensors. Here are some examples. You can measure plant size, you can measure area, height, weight also can be measured indirectly. You can measure, you can do counts, leaf number, flower number, seedling number, and I'm going to show an example of this seedling number today. You can measure the color, intensity, progression. You can, you can look at shelf life. If you're a flower grower, you can use this for, for looking at how crop is progressing to maturity. You can look at damage, nutrient deficiencies, insect damage. You can quantify the extent of damage. You can also look at uh, many other biochemical parameters like chlorophyll and nitrogen present in the plant. And you can come up with some stress indices of the plant stressed in general. All of that is possible with a, just a click of a button. You just take a picture, like here is a plant. You take a picture of the plant within a few seconds, you start seeing some useful information displayed on phones or on computers. That's how simple, that's how easy this technology can be used. I'm gonna show some examples, um, some applications, real world applications. And I also will show you a demonstration after I show these applications, okay? So the first application is seedling number. You, know, you see here a, a rock wool slab with lettuce seedlings. Um, one of the things that as a grower you need to know is how many seedlings, good quality seedlings are present because that determines how much area can be planted. And if there are not enough seedlings, you need to know how many more need to be sown, right? Now, you in common situations, I'm just showing you a rock wool slab here, 
But if you look at a, you know, if you're a large scale grower, there are hundreds of these rock wood slabs, sometimes dozens of them in small, some small scale growers I've seen, they have dozens and dozens of these trays. How do you count these ceilings? Yes, you can count them, but that's labor intensive. It's going to take some time. It's going to be some errors. If I start counting these numbers, you know, I may not be as accurate, but I can take a picture with a phone and within a second, I can get um, the plant seedling number. And you can see here that same picture. I took a picture. The plant has determined what is a seedling and what is not a seedling. In this case, it is determined that these green ones are all the seedlings and the black area is that rock wool area, it kind of subtracted that area. And then afterwards, it just simply counted and gave me within one second number of seedlings, 108 seedlings in this particular case. So if you, if you have, uh, you know, let's say 50 trays, or 100 trays that you're planning to plant and you wanted to count the seedlings, imagine how much time it takes. But within five minutes, within even less than that, you can get number of ceilings with this technology. Just a picture on your phone and you get that information. Um, the other application um, is related to measuring plant growth. And I wanted to emphasize why that measurement is very important, especially in indoor farming. And we all know electrical energy costs, big component of total amount we, of costs involved in production, right? That's because in indoor agriculture on average, we use 16 hours of lighting. And let's say if you're a lettuce grower, the recommended intensities is about 12 to 15 moles of light in a meter square area. And if you take that number and let's say you have a thousand meter square farm, if you want to give plants 15 moles per day for 16 hours, I'm sorry, 15 moles per day, um, you know, assuming you know, about 150 watts power per meter square and really good photon efficiency is 2.2 micromoles per joule you know, still you're looking at numbers like approximately 250, 225, $250 per thousand meters square per day. It's a lot of money. Um, so this, that's the reason why the energy costs, electrical energy costs for lighting are very high in indoor farming. One of the best way and, and to reduce the, uh, uh, maximize the amount of, uh, uh, increase the efficiency of lighting in indoor production is to reduce the interception losses. I just wanted to emphasize, or ex give an example here. If you look at this picture, it's approximately a meter square. You got 30 lettuce plants here. And let's say you turn on an LED light on top of this. And let's say that LED lighting is providing 100 micromoles per meter square per second. If you look at this particular picture, nearly two thirds in that of that meter square area is covered by this white styrofoam. So all of those light particles, those photons falling on those on the styrofoam, they are just reflecting, they are not being used by the plant. The plant area is only nearly a third of that. So the light that is intercepted, in other words, the light that falls on the leaf, that is what the plant is going to absorb and later on use it in the metabolic process and convert that into biomass. But the light that falls surrounding in the areas between the plants, that's kind of wasted. So the, the major source of wastage is this interception losses. And, and the, the, the more interception, the less wastage. And one of the factors that affect interception losses is plant growth. If a plant is growing slower, that means more light is actually wasted. And I'm going to give you an example, one more example here, and afterwards we'll see uh, some real good uh, uh, smart sensing methods. So I have a small graph here. You notice on the x-axis, different days after planting, just for 15 days of crop growth, we're looking at leaf area. That's the area of the green foliage, okay? I have two curves here. One of them is plants growing at a faster rate, for 25% of their daily rate increase. Um, other stuff uh, is another graph. It's a slower growing plant. It's, it's growing at 20% of its daily size. Okay, So just 5% difference in their relative growth rates. If you take these two plants, 25% and 20%, just 5% difference. And if you look in terms of how much area the green foliage is going to cover in 15 days, 
the one that is growing faster that is shown in blue, that covers about 27% of the grow area in 15 days. Whereas the one that is growing just 5% slower, it's only covering 16% of grow area. So just a 5% slow growth rate, you're seeing almost a 11% reduction in growth area. So that reduction in growth area is directly related to reduced interception, is directly related to wastage of light. So you're paying a lot for light, $225 per day per thousand meter square area, but most of the light is just being wasted and you are further wasting it if your plants are growing just 5% slower in this case, okay? So how can, how can you make sure that the plants are growing that you want them to grow? You know, usually the recommended rate for lettuce is about 25 to 30% on increase in their weight uh, based on previous day's weight, okay? How can you make sure that the plants are growing optimally? The only way is to monitor their growth, but then you can't cut the plants, weigh the plants or measure them. That's too much of work. This is where that smart sensors can really help. We can take pictures of plants and the same plant over time. And from that pictures, we can estimate that leaf area I've just shown you very quickly. And, and here is an example you can see here, uh, lettuce plants on day 10, 12, day 18 and day 20, we are taking pictures and we're measuring leaf area instantaneously. And we're taking that information and plotting on some standard curves. And, and in this particular case, that brown line is what I want my plants to grow. That's optimum growth rate for me. And I am collecting these images and I'm plotting the growth rate of these plants on that standard curve. And as long as the growth rate falls right on top of the standard curve, I'm happy that my plants are doing fine. I don't need to worry about it. So that's peace of mind for me. So that's, that's how easily you can just take pictures. You can take pictures of hundreds of plants. You can take pictures wherever you want. You can position some of these cameras on top of the plants, leave them there, collect the images. And all of those images will come to your central computer. With click of a button, you can process them in a few minutes and you can see how plants are growing in different sections of your indoor farm. All of that happening with just simple images. No labor is involved, no need to climb, use ladders, you know, nothing like that. It, this can happen automatically. So that's, that's the power of the smart sensors. Um, we actually compared um, how useful this technology can be or how can this be compared with uh, you know, manual visual rating. And so what we did was we grow lettuce and tomato plants um, at uh, optimum and suboptimum treatment. So let's say you know, low nitrogen, high nitrogen. And we asked different people to come to this uh, area and rate the plants. And people started rating these plants after seven or eight days of uh, growing them under optimum and suboptimum conditions. The graph at the top shows um, their rating. So this is this graph at the top is people rating, different people rating at the plants. You can see the optimum rating is this black bar, the suboptimum rating is this uh, gray bar. And if the rating is high, like close to four or five, that means the plants are doing very well. If the rating is close to zero, that means plants are really bad, sick, and they're not looking well. What we found was that people have rated them, but they couldn't actually sh detect differences between an optimum and a suboptimum grown plants after seven or eight days. But on the same day, when we took these smart sensors, these cameras, and we took some pictures with our phones, we were actually able to see the differences. So what it's telling us is that when the differences between plants are small, we may not be able to detect them accurately because of some of the limitations with our vision. But smart sensors are more accurate at detecting small differences. Isn't that we really wanted to detect? We wanted to identify differences when they're small and make corrections when those growth related issues are small. You don't want to wait until they become big, then you start seeing them, but probably that's too late. So that's one of the biggest advantages with smartphone technology. It's, it's so accurate. It's much more accurate than visual assessments, okay? Um, We're actually using this technology to manage nutrient solutions in indoor farming, as well as in greenhouse hydroponics. I just want to give you a little background about what I mean by managing nutrient solutions. Um, you all probably know the way we normally 
uh, fertilized plants is we have a recirculating, a recycling nutrient solution, right? And we measure electrical conductivity, EC of the solution. You know, some of the companies are actually selling automated controllers, right? These controllers have sensors, they measure the EC. And when the EC, which is electrical conductivity, drops below a target, then there is a stock solution comes on and starts dosing or adding concentrated nutrient solution to the, uh, you know, the solution flowing to the plants until the EC increases back to the target level. So the whole approach of growing or managing nutrients in indoor farming or in hydroponics is by maintaining a target EC. And as long as the EC is a target level, we are confident that plants are getting all the nutrients. Well, is that true? We, we actually, actually ask this question. Supplying plants are, are nutrients based on a target EC. Is it, is it the optimum way of doing it? So what we did was we conducted an experiment where we did uh, that same method. Daily, we used to ma maintain the EC and manage EC, and that's called the recycle treatment, okay? But then we also did, just for comparison's sake, this is not practical, but for just for comparison's sake, to see how much yield reduction is happening because of this recycling. We grow plants with fresh solution. Every day they got fresh nutrient solution. EC was same. We were maintaining 1.2 decisiemens in this recycle treatment. We're maintaining the same 1.2 decisiemens uh, per meter, even in this fresh treatment. It's just that the, the, this particular plants got um, fresh solution every day. And what we saw was there was an effect of continuous recycling. The maintaining EC was not actually the optimum way. It was nearly a 23% decrease in yield. So what it means is that we should not be continuously recycling and just simply maintaining EC. You know, if we do that, there are some issues. And we found that actually several nutrients uh, concentrations are deficient in plants grown with the recycle treatment compared to that fresh treatments. NPK were deficient. We noticed sodium was accumulating in plants when we do that uh, recycling. And iron was also deficient. So the, the, the deal is we, we have to throw away this old solution and we have to prepare the fresh solution at some point of time. And when do you do that? When do you do the tank change? Do you want to do on a weekly basis? Do you want to do uh, halfway through or do you want to just do a fresh solution way at the end, the last week of growth? There's no, no guidance there. And so what we did was we actually used this smartphone sensing technology. We started taking pictures of plants because we're not, we, we can see how these plants are growing with, with these images, right? And so what we found was, if you notice this graph at the bottom, there are two curves here. The top curve is the daily fresh treatment and the bottom curve is that uh, recycling treatment where we maintained EC. The EC is same in both, but it's just that the daily fresh got fresh nutrients, right? What we saw was right around two weeks, that's where the curves are starting to separate. You can, you can kind of see here, the plant pictures are also kind of becoming slightly larger in the fresh treatment, whereas the recycled plants are smaller. So now this tells us that in, in non-destructively, we're actually able to see when the separation is happening. And when that separation happens at right around that time when we throw away the old solution and then give plants fresh solution, we didn't see any effect. That effect was taken away. You see here the control plants, two weeks after we discarded the the old solution based on that imaging smartphone technology. And we got similar fresh weights, similar dry weights. And these was as high as growing plants with RO water, okay? RO water is expensive. If you have an RO water system, that's great, but not most, everybody has an RO water system, right? So, so this technology can be used. You can take these pictures and you can start comparing the growth of the plants. When the plants start diverting or kind of separating from the standard curves that you, you ideally want the, the size to be. And this is something you can build one or two years of work. You have your own data, you know how plants would grow. Uh, but then once you start seeing the plants are separating, that's when you throw away the solution and prepare a fresh solution. So that's another way how you can use this technology. Um, the other thing that we are doing with this technology is actually measuring how much nitrogen is present inside the plants. Nitrogen is a very important variable. It, uh, it affects crop growth. Uh, it's very important, uh, but you know, if we just supply nitrogen through fertilizer, there are many factors like form of nitrogen. For example, if you're applying a monical form of nitrogen in hydroponics, it can pose some issues, especially when pH is high. 
uh, that that uh, that form of nitrogen can convert into ammonia gas, and you may lose. You know, pH can affect nitrogen availability. Sometimes sensor calibration. Look at this picture. This is a grower who was who thought that he was doing everything perfect, but his sensor was poorly calibrated, and he started seeing issues. So so although you supply nitrogen, there are so many other things can that can affect nitrogen levels in plants. The best way to supply nitrogen fertilizer is to actually know how much nitrogen is there in the plant. End of the day, that's what matters, right? What is there in the plant is what matters. That's what affects growth. But then the problem is it's not easy to measure how much nitrogen is there in the plant with the current technology. You got to send samples to lab. That's about $20 per sample. It's four or five days of time. You can also buy some sensors, but they're like three, four thousand dollars. So there's not many options available to our growers. So we did, we can actually develop, we developed a smartphone based technique where you can actually take a picture and very quickly, you know, it, it measures a nitrogen index. And we'll see if we have time today, I'll show you how nice this demo, this, this whole thing is. So that's, that's another nice thing. You can just take a picture of the plant. You can look at how much uh, green light is being absorbed by the plants, how much blue light is being absorbed by the plants and how much red light is being absorbed. And from those uh, numbers, you can come up with a nice nitrogen index for plants. And that nitrogen index is directly related to how much nitrogen is present in the plant. You can see here lettuce plants, they're grown at different amounts of fertilizer, different levels of EC. As you increase the EC, you know, there's more nitrogen being supplied to plants. And the same plants, when you process them, you can see how nicely, linearly, that nitrogen index is increasing with more and more nitrogen provided to plants. So now we can take these index indices, relate them to actual nitrogen in the, in the plant, and come up with all mathematical algorithms. And you can put all of them into the programming that you develop for smartphones. Growers need not worry anything. When they take a picture, instead of index, they can actually see how much nitrogen is present in the plant. And when the nitrogen levels are lower, then we have to add a little bit more uh, of nitrogen. That's how nice it is. Um, Sherry, just want to ask you on timing wise, do you think we have a few minutes for a demonstration? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. Um, I won't take more than two minutes, but uh, I just want to show how easy this technology is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing this and um, I'm going to share my uh, screen. Okay. okay. So do you see my phone? Mm -hmm. Yes, perfect. So this is my this is my phone. And now you should be seeing some apps on my phone. So right now I use a phone a smartphone app. You can see this, this is a MATLAB app, but eventually we'll develop apps that are for Android or for iPhone. The growers can just use it, just like what I'm doing right now. So when I click this app, um, the app is going to connect to uh, a cloud, which is an online storage for me. That in, inside that storage, I, all my software are located. Um, but I just wanted to give this a, a few more seconds. Let's give it like 10 seconds. So right now, my phone is connected to that online storage. Okay, so I have some files. And Sherry, can you please confirm you see something called plant nitrogen and area measurement? Mm -hmm. computer. Okay, so this is the program and I've written this program. This program is on a, a server, okay? And what I'm going to show you is when I run this program on my phone, all I need to do is when I click this button on, now the program starts to control the camera on my phone. Now you can see the camera? Yes. Right? You can see my hand, you can see me, right? So I, what I have is I have, I just brought a, a plant. I'm working from home today, okay? So here is a pepper plant. And next to the pepper plant, there is a red color paper. That's just a red color piece of paper. It's about 16 centimeters square, okay? So I'm telling the software that the red color is 16 centimeters square. Now tell me based on that, what is the area of the plant? But not just that, also tell me how much nitrogen is there in the plant, okay? So what I need to do is just put it right about a foot above the plants and I take a picture. So I just took a picture and within a few seconds, oops, um, give me one second here. Uh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, instead of that, I'm going to show you something. My, my Wi-Fi uh, kind of turned out bad on me. Um, Sherry, do you see the phone um, right now? Um, I'm showing from, you a phone. From your video? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can see. Hold on. Um, so I, I was hoping yeah, that it, I can show this. Video yeah, can, you, can you stop sharing? Stop okay. sharing the screen so that your video is going to be big. Okay, so right now, um, give me one more second, just to make this much easier. Yeah, I'm just going to turn off my background as yep, well. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Now you can see on my phone, you see on the, oops, on the left side, you see that same plant. I just took a picture of that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it processed the image. And right at the bottom, within a few seconds, it's telling me that the plant is 85 centimeters squared in area, 85.56. And the nitrogen index is 0.53. So right there, just a few seconds, um, I just took a click, just took a picture of a plant and it took about 10, 15 seconds. And I have now an index for nitrogen and also the size of the plant. It's not just that we can measure the germination just like this, the height of the plant, the color of the plant, all those interesting things can be measured just by taking some pictures. So that's how simple the technology is. But what we, are, we want to really do is right now, I've shown you that it's based off MATLAB, but we need to make this technology available to our growers. And so what we're going to do is um, I'm now, I'm going to share my desktop and I'm going to go back to uh, the presentation um, right here. And I want to show the model that we are thinking about uh, taking this technology to growers. So if you see here, what happens is we're going to create some apps and these apps will be available as early as January or February of next year. We are trying to develop apps on Android phones first, like the Samsung phones. And also we're thinking of iPhones, um, perhaps first Android and then iPhone, iOS phones. Um, but then once these apps are there, growers can download these apps. We're going to charge a minimal fee uh, but that's on an annual basis. It's only going to help us, you know, do more research, but uh, it, it'll be quite minimal. So once you have this app, you turn on, you click on the app, automatically the app will control the camera of your phone and you can take pictures of the plants. It will provide some guidance on how uh, pictures can be taken, at what height you need to place the camera above the plants, things like that. You can choose species lettuce or basil or whatever species you want. You can also choose if you are interested in germination percentages, if you're interested in growth, are you interested in nitrogen, are you interested in some other stresses, you can select whatever you want. Once you select that, the camera will, uh, the, the software will start controlling the camera, take a picture, the pictures from your phone or for your computers, for your iPads, they come to Purdue. We have a server at Purdue. We keep all the software at Purdue server they get processed and within a few seconds, just like I've shown you on my uh, phone, you will start seeing the numbers. So you can save those numbers onto your phone and keep on doing that as many times you want. Now you imagine if you are interested in nitrogen, plant nitrogen content, if you just, just to take a single sample to the lab, it will take $20 in four or five days. But now with this, you can take as many pictures you want, as many times you want, and get the information right on your phone, right, right within a few seconds. This is how powerful this, this technology is. Um, so I, I'll stop there. I know um, I went a little longer than I, I originally planned, five more minutes, but um, I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, okay, thank you so much, Krishna. It was very, very interesting.